Carnival of Brazil is all that. Doubt it? Welcome to the vibrant universe of Brazil, where every corner is filled with energy, excitement, and decay. This captivating country that can embrace you like an angel or like a gorilla. In the rare glimpses we have of Brazil, they usually show the carnival, soccer, and people partying. Oh, it's an eternal joy. Many facts and important news don't fully make it across its borders, thanks to the control of major global media agencies. But now is not the time to get into that. Yes, because we're at Brazil's carnival. These are the most anticipated days for its people. The desire to go out jumping through the streets, sweating to the vibrant beats of percussion, and at the same time to the annoying sounds of low quality speakers. Quality isn't the goal here. Nobody cares about that. It's a mix of chaos, joy, suffering, and happiness happening almost imperceptibly. Some folks see Brazilian Carnival as the one chance in the year to express themselves with their bodies and personalities. Freedom, woohoo! To the rhythm of samba and some not so great tunes that prioritize just moving semi-naked bodies in public streets, it's an endless celebration the ultimate empowerment of owning their bodies, a melting pot of emotions. You might find it strange, but at the roots of carnival, we have African culture with its music and religion, mingling with the masked balls of European aristocracy, true Dionysian revelries. And who doesn't love color? Everybody does. The enchanting blend of colors from the costumes, clothes, and accessories that mark this celebration along with the mix of people, races, religions, genders, ages, forms a colorful salad, but not necessarily a healthy one. All the beauty and joy shown on TV always camouflage crimes in the shadows of the crowd. Cell phone thefts, fights, repulsive harassment, accidents. Journalism does show some of it, but without shining too much light, because the big media are the biggest sponsors of the party. During Carnival, a lot of advertising space is sold, not to mention the commercial breaks on TV between a samba school parade or street party. Although Carnival happens everywhere, from small towns in the countryside to along its 7,300 kilometers of beaches from north to south of the country, there are major and important centers of the party that receive special media attention. Rio de Janeiro, historically a global reference for tourism in Brazil, with its beautiful and exciting beaches, its stunning geography, its sun-kissed women, and the title of the Samba Capital. Yes, because there, not only have great national Samba artists emerged since the 1920s, but it was also established that the best vehicle for its promotion at parties and popular events would be the Samba schools, which are still the main attractions of Rio's carnival today. It has also become a multi-million dollar business. Due to its great national and international visibility, sponsorship quotas from major companies fuel the event's wealth, broadcasted by the biggest TV channels. For this reason, no less grandiose is the stage of this grand show. The Samba Drome is a large illuminated avenue with grandstands funded by public coffers with all the necessary technical infrastructure. Even though it's a public facility intended for a popular celebration, if people want to participate in the party, they'll have to shell out between $29 and $60, 2024. A not so popular amount by Brazilian standards. It's a feast for the eyes. Thousands of members of these Samba schools in their colorful costumes, or almost no costume at all, possess an unmatched artistic creativity, which is quintessentially Brazilian. Sambaing and parading to the powerful sound of the big drum section with their drums and whistles. All this performance is televised, and behind it, there's a competition among the Samba schools, where the winner will have, in addition to the title, all the media at their disposal, such as TV programs, money for appearances, contracts, and various fees. Watching the Samba schools at the Rio Samba Drome is a wonderful sensory experience where people forget for a few moments about the daily poverty they live in, the violence, the corruption, and the organized crime money behind all this beauty. During this time, the city of Rio and the country as a whole breathe carnival. It's all you see on TV. 
The enchantment and distraction of people who get caught up in the Samba make them potential candidates for crime statistics. In 2023, just at events on Copacabana Beach, outside of Carnival, there were over 1,300 thefts and robberies of cell phones, according to official records. These numbers don't reflect the true extent of the problem. Most people don't report to authorities because they lack confidence that their issue will be resolved by the police or the courts. Brazil is experiencing its greatest legal insecurity of all time. People no longer believe the system will protect them, return their belongings, or punish criminals. In this scenario, Carnival becomes not only the most beautiful party in the world, but also very dangerous. It's risky nowadays, anywhere and at any time, to be out on the streets of Brazil due to the general insecurity observed. And when this insecurity is compounded by the exponential increase in alcohol consumption on the streets, criminals infiltrating parties and crowds, and the false sense of freedom and boundaries, Carnival becomes a minefield of problems. Ah, don't give me that. What about the Carnival street parties? The true expression of people's freedom spontaneously coming together just to have fun in the streets. That's freedom and joy. That's pure democracy. Not quite. The carnival street parties, which happen in all regions, are actually organized by groups of people or companies that centralize the production of the event itself and make a lot of money from it, depending on its size and number of participants. These companies sell t-shirts that identify the people who paid to participate, giving them access and the right to have fun on public streets. There are indeed free street parties, small ones in neighborhoods and suburbs. But the most popular ones with renowned artists leading the way and offering more status for social media selfies can cost up to $400 per person. It's also worth considering, though nobody really wants to hear about it, the expenses the government incurs in providing public resources during the carnival street parties reaching thousands of dollars. The police department, traffic department, public restrooms, street cleaning, public health department for emergencies, hiring of third-party services that the government can't handle alone, and so on and so forth. Nobody wants to hear about that. The party also serves as a stage for politicians to showcase their love for the people. For some citizens who may not even like carnival, what's left are streets closed off, litter, vandalism, annoying noise, urine on lampposts, outdoor degradation. But none of that is enough to overshadow such immense joy, right? Kisses on the mouth, dancing in the street in a bikini, sleeping on the beach, watching the sunrise, whether you're square or not, is priceless. After all, how many carnivals do we get the chance to experience in our lifetime? And there's no bigger stage, no more incredible and fitting place for carnival to happen than Brazil. In a country with approximately 10 million illiterate people, 2023, an average individual income of $6,900 per year, ranking among the worst in education worldwide, and decades of populist leaders, we have a perfect scenario for this optical illusion that is carnival, an effective illusionism that keeps hidden the true reasons for Brazil's underdevelopment. But forget all that! It's beautiful, isn't it?